Cider making is about 50% chemistry and the other 50% is the art. I mean, it's like the Wild West. And we've got everything that's cool about winemaking and we got the freedom that's in the culture of craft beer making. My name is Alejandro Del Perel and uh, I make nine pin cider for a living. We probably have about 750,000 to a million pounds of apples in the cider at any given time if you were to translate all our liquid into physical apple weight, yeah, which is a lot of fruit. And it gives you sort of an idea of how many apples we, go, we process. A lot of cider making does involve uh, chemistry and an understanding of chemical reactions that occur during fermentation. Fermentation is the conversion of sugar by yeast into carbon dioxide and alcohol, and the gas coming out of there is carbon dioxide. You know, you can make alcohol out of anything with sugar in it, so any apple will do, but you know, the type of apple you use will obviously influence what your final cider is going to taste like. New York, we're number one in the nation for apple varieties, so we grow more types of apples than every, any other state. That's a huge palette of little nuanced flavors to work with, and so this is essentially a cider maker's dream place. When you bring in the sweet juice, fresh pressed from the orchard, a lot of times there's so much sugar in there that it's hard to judge how sour the, the fermented version of it will be. So we test acidity by uh, doing an acid-based titration, which essentially you take a known quantity of a uh, base and then you add cider to it and then you add a base back to that and based on the difference uh, you can calculate what the, the perceived sourness of your final cider is gonna be like. Yeast is another great aspect in the cider making process that you can tweak to come up with different cider styles. We use uh, predominantly a commercial white wine yeast. It gives um, our cider sort of a Prosecco, Moscato, sparkling wine-like quality. Um, but we also make a cider with a Belgian yeast, which will give the cider a, the aroma is sort of banana-esque and tropical fruity. There's tons of natural yeast that it's in in cider, it's all found on the skins of the apples and the juice and the air in the cidery. And um, the problem with natural yeast is that there's no controlling what kind of flavor they'll impart on the cider. So sulfites or sulfur dioxide helps prevent those microbes from establishing themselves and allows the cider to age and mature without essentially turning to vinegar or generating other off flavors. We do things like co-fermentation. So that's where we actually will ferment the cider with other ingredients. Take blueberries, for example. We, it's not like you're adding blueberry flavoring. You're actually allowing the yeast to consume the sugar within that blueberry and, and produce um, you know, whatever blueberry flavor the yeast decides to produce. So it results in like a really well-integrated blueberry note. So it goes from fresh pressed juice to our full alcohol content in about seven days. Then we transfer the cider into a newly sanitized secondary fermentation vessel, and it will sit in that vessel for anywhere from three months to a year. Then it gets transferred into our packaged and sent off to the market. You know, because it's such a new category, there's no real expectation, there's no real tradition. Not only can we be experimental like a winemaker would be with the types of grapes they use and you know aging practices, but we can also be experimental in the way a craft brewer would be in terms of infusions and fermenting with other non-apple ingredients. 